Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to another video from our lives. In this particular video, we're going to be working more in our bathroom renovation of our 1988 Palm Harbor single eye mobile home. <laughs> and today we are going to start by finishing the flooring in the bathroom. And then we kind of have our bottoms handed to us and uh, get, <laughs> get kicked in the pants. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. So the flooring for the bathroom is actually going to match what we did in the kitchen. You know, we want it to all like come together into one cohesive thought. And by match, you mean exactly the same. It is. Good match. So, <laughs> it is the vinyl waterproof flooring, which, as you know, is very important in a bathroom, and especially with little boys in a bathroom by themselves. So, as far as this floor installation, we started off by removing the floor vent and patching it and closing it up. If you're new to our channel or you missed the last one where we did the flooring in the boys' bedroom, you may really be confused why we just did that. We have another heating and air conditioning solution that we are planning to install and we don't need those floor vents. We've actually removed our electric furnace in previous videos and are just doing away with the old junk in the mobile home. So like Angela said, this flooring is 100% waterproof and it doesn't mean that it forms a 100% waterproof barrier. So if you're trying to turn your bathroom floor into a tub, it's gonna get the subfloor wet. The benefit of this flooring is that when it gets wet, it won't pucker and expand and come apart or fall apart or mold or mildew as easily <laughs> as other flooring. So a little bit of a clarification, it's not as waterproof solid as say a sheet vinyl, but it is tons more durable, mm -hmm. feels and looks nice, and is what we chose to do. <laughs> And it is actually really easy to put down. Um, the only tools we used were measuring tools, a marking stick, <laughs> and something to cut it with, which for the bathroom floor, I think we used a circular saw. You can use, use a circular an saw oscillating a tool, something like that to kind of cut through it. It's pretty easy to cut too. So um, I was able to sit in the floor and do it myself. Mm hmm you and get all the get, floor work. Yeah. And I would mark off everything, let Sam cut it, and bring it back to me. We are talking about a bathroom that's literally maybe five feet by five feet. Yeah. So there wasn't that, a lot of so. work space. Yay! Yay! We got a pooper hole. Is it flush with the pipe and the floor and everything? Yes. Nice. Cleanest it'll ever be. That's where the Tootsie Rolls go. That's where the toothpaste goes. With the flooring installed, we then worked on installing the toilet. Little did we know what a nightmare this was going to be. The toilet flange is installed and it is squared to the wall. Now the point or the thing I'm saying it's squared about is you want to find the point where your toilet flange bolts or the bolts that attach your toilet to the floor, the flange. You want to make sure they are parallel to your wall that the toilet is going to be backing up to. That way when you go to install it, you don't have a problem that the bolts don't actually slide and lock in place and hold everything down tight. Oh, I don't really want it. 
actually gone over the place. Yeah. Alright, I gotta make it a little bit flatter though so I can cut this. Try and go quick. That way you don't have all the water spilling all over a brand new floor. And we're done. Yay! Awesome. That was not a mess. That's great. Yeah. So we also picked up one of these trim rings just to make everything look nice and pretty around the floor. This is a split one that kind of hinges so we can put it down here around the pipe. Close it back. And then we have more of a polished, prettier look to the transition instead of just PEX pipe coming through our floor. It's an upside down toilet. Oh. And Good job, it's the business name. Thankfully, it's new. What is that? Oh, it's a lid. How did you make that look so easy? There, Isaac. Have a toilet box, son. So the toilet kit, most all toilets when you buy them come with a wax ring. Um, you can do what you want to, but I would not recommend using it. It's probably junk. What we have here is a Danco brand Perfect Seal wax ring. This one I really like because it still actually has wax in it, but it has, um, let me think about my words. I like this wax ring because it still has wax, which is really the great thing and the best thing for the job. However, the actual contact or business portion, or whatever you touch, is rubber coated. So, best of both worlds. Now, if you notice, it's also got this blue part here. This is fully adjustable. Say, if your toilet flange is below your flooring, someone's done a new floor drive in your bathroom, and it's lower, you would use this. For in our case, we just installed everything. It's flush mount, so we're just going to be using the gray part. So, it's pretty cool, versatile. It's a good wax ring. I guess it's still a wax ring. It's a good product and this is one of those things where you really don't want to skimp out because this is the only thing protecting you from keeping stuff where it's supposed to go. These little plastic guys help keep the bolts from falling over whenever you go to sit the toilet over these things. Just helpful. All right, roughly line them up there with my pencil marks. Now I'll put my wax ring over here. Making sure it's centered, which it is. Can you shoot me without it being too close? I feel like it's going to be really close. No, it's fine. Okay, we're now about to reach the point of no return, which is actually sitting the toilet on this, compressing the wax ring, and smushing it all together. This is your last chance to make sure you like how those bolts are. Everything's rock solid and attached down good, because once you smush it, you don't really have many options to fix that. You do, but not you too many. you got to get a new one. Not too many. Actually, this one's reusable. Well, that's good. They say it's reusable. I would never use it. Whatever. All right. Let's see you sit it. You'll see me sit Don't on the sit toilet. On it yet. <laughs> it's not going down. Oh, raggy. Come to find out, our toilet flange is too thick for our toilet to sit on top of it, which I uh, went to the hardware store, I just got back, they barely, 
I barely got them really closed. Um, didn't really get anything better. I picked up a few things to try and fix it, but we are running into an issue where our toilet flange is just too thick, which is kind of frustrating because we did research and everywhere we saw, they say you put your toilet flange on your finished floor. You put it on at the end. Otherwise, it'll be too low. Well, we're having the opposite problem. Don't know why. Check the toilet. Maybe the toilet is designed for retrofit and so it doesn't have as much clearance to accept a thicker flange. I don't know at this point. Um, so what we're going to do is cut our floor, take up our old flange, and try and lower it down. I do have a new flange. I may try that at the same time and just kind of see what we can do, what we can figure out. Elijah, you see how much fun this is? This is why people pay other people to do this. <laughs> it costs money, but then you don't have to do this. Yeah. Yay! You got contact. Yay! The toilet is now down, it is sealed up and everything, and honestly, there's been probably about two hours time lapse from the first wax ring that we put down, the really cool gray and blue one, to where we're at now. We had to go get a second wax ring because that first one got destroyed because the first flange, this one, was too thick, but more importantly, was not the correct fit for our pipes. We were trying to cheat and make it just work this way with silicone, I came back to actually have problems with the depth, so took it all out. We have one down there with glue, which is correct, and have a thinner, smaller wax ring, which is also correct. In the end, what we had to do, or what was really fighting us, is the fact that these flanges have a little bit of a lip here at the edge, and that was resting on top of our finished floor, raising it up just enough to where when the toilet and everything was done, it wouldn't clear it. There wasn't enough height. So we cut away our new floor, the gray one, a little bit wider so that this lip could rest below right on top of the plywood and that allowed everything to be good. So perhaps I went through all of that headache just to share with you guys that this type of fitting is not correct for PVC and to make sure we have the right thing in the end. I don't know. Either way, I'm glad it's done and we can move on with this toilet installation. There it is. Piece of cake. You made it look easy. Thanks. Mommy, you're strong. Mommy's very strong. You're welcome. Oops. So in hindsight, it would kind of appear that the toilet flange that we bought or were available to us in the store are designed to be installed directly on the subfloor and then you put your finished floor around it and it evens out in the end. Although that directly contradicted all the research we did, all the YouTube videos I watched and <laughs> things we read, that everyone said you put it on top of your finished floor, finished floor. So that's what we did and I feel like it really came back to bite us. I don't know if maybe we had the wrong items or we didn't have the correct selection to pick from. We went to both Lowe's and our local mom and pop's hardware store and neither one had anything grandly different as far as selections, so who knows. So in the end, we did make it work mm -hmm. and it's not a patch job. It's legitimately glued down good, it is secure, it fits good, it's got a great seal. It was just so much more of a nightmare than we thought we would ever have with a toilet flange install with new construction. We have learned. So. Toilet flange buyer, beware. Hmm. We're ready to go ahead and put the vanity down over top of the pipes. Hopefully I cut the hole in the bottom of the cabinet correctly, measured it right. And as you guys also just saw, I just stuffed a bunch of steel wool all around the edge of the pipes, down any kind of nooks and crannies, crevices out there. In case any mice decide to make a little living, want to see what's going on up top, they can munch on that and die. 
or at least stay out. I don't know. It's not foolproof. The jury's out whether or not people say still wool works or not. But I picked up five pounds of a really coarse roll off of Amazon when we started this renovation. And as until now, I hadn't used it. So, gotta use it. So I used it. And, you know, better than nothing. There goes nothing. Let's see if we can fit this vanity. First try. By myself. Angela went to Lowe's. Again. All right, that's gonna be the easy part to film. The next part is gonna be incredibly difficult to do. I've gotta lay down on the floor and up inside that vanity cabinet to plumb in the supply, drain lines, and our vent line. We have a little studer vent. So I'm just gonna do that. And when I'm done, I'll put the camera down there and let you guys look around and everything and kind of see what's what. The Probably the biggest takeaway that I will worth telling you guys right now that I can think of is that we have a Schedule 40 PVC P-Trap. We did not get the cheap little junk ones that thread together. This is a legit Schedule 40 glue together P-Trap. In my mind, it's worth the extra money and extra time to glue it all together to have a rock solid joint and not have any leaks, especially as things get pushed in the cabinet, moved around, jostled, hit, knocked, or whatever throughout the years, and no one really ever goes back to check and see if it's leaking. It's just a better peace of mind knowing that it's totally glued up and really should not ever leak or come apart down there. All right, time to get on the floor, do my work, and I'll let you guys see as soon as I'm done. Well, I am glad that that is done. That was zero fun, but it is now done, so yay. <laughs> As you guys can see, everything is plumbed up with inch and a half Schedule 40 PVC, including the P-Trap, the Sanitary T, and going up to our vent. The vent is mounted about seven inches above where the Sanitary T and P-Trap um, join in or combine. So that's good. That's what's appropriate for at least our area. And then everything connects up to the sink, as you saw, with a inch and a half to one and a quarter reducer slip fitting with a nylon nut. Now, if you notice inside our sink, we do not have what is probably more of a common style lavatory drain setup where you have the little thing that raises up and down to become a plug or a drain. We don't have that because we have two feral children and those children like to play in the sink and things that are not supposed to go down the drain have went down the drain in history. So we decided to put in this commercial style lavatory drain, one that does not get stopped up, one that has little tiny holes and should help keep our drain system proper and correct, as well as our septic tank and everything else from getting foreign objects in it. All right, I'm done with my part. I'm gonna get Angel in here to finish it out as far as installing the faucet. She actually likes doing that kind of stuff and she's kind of excited to open it up and have a little hands-on DIY stuff since most of the other stuff that's been done today has been kind of not fun. So, tag, she's it. Ta-da! Done, right? I have to put these two little nuts on underneath to hold the faucet to it. And then I just have the two supply lines that I have to screw to the hot and cold. And that's really all you have to do. Do I get to do the honors? Sure, go for it. All right, this should be cold water. All right, 
the water is still, so that means it's not leaking from the tank to the toilet. So hey, we're good there too. Flush that toilet. Now we look for leaks on the floor. <laughs> yeah, let's hope not. So, so some of the bad things that happened with this little install. Let's remember the kicks in our pants. <laughs> was the toilet supply line was like two inches too short. That's my fault. When we were at the store, we had like 12 and 16. inch, 16 inch, and you said, let's get the 16. And me and my all knowing lack of said, <laughs> no, I think 12 inches is good enough. It's all new. It's like, I don't want it to be too long. And it was literally like this much too short. So we really needed a 14 inch. So Angela got to go to the store and pick up a new one. And that was, your third time at a hardware store in that one single day. <laughs> we started out the morning going to Lowe's, getting what we thought was everything, had the toilet flange nightmare, went to our mom and pop's hardware store, got another toilet flange, was great, came home, fixed it. By and that time, mom, again. well, by that time, mom and pop's store had closed. They were yes. closed for the day. And then you went back to Lowe's while I did the vanity install. But by golly, we got it done. We did. We wanted it done in a day. And so we push through <laughs> i don't think we did it in a day though because it was the next day that i did the drain fixes we got the toilet fixed in okay day. yes yes the toilet was installed within one day yes so but then we found out that the sink leaked yeah that was on our brand new vanity that was bad and you can nod your head i guess to this one the evening we got everything hooked up turned the sink on and it leaked and then it did not drain seemingly very well at all without the toilet being flushed i was stressed out so bad i was telling you was like just leave it i don't know what to do i think we have to just cut it and <laughs> replumb in the whole bathroom i don't know it was bad so. well first things first we had to swap out the actual sink drain for our vanity we had some issues last night once we got everything together and we did our first couple of flushes that one this thing leaked even though we cranked it down tight and two, the whole plumbing system was not draining correctly. It actually wouldn't drain unless you flush the toilet. So that was a really big stressor and we just called it a night. We literally walked away. Coming back to today, we went ahead and went out to the store because we had to run a few other errands and I picked up a lot of stuff. I picked up a new lavatory drain or sink drain unit. I then picked up a more expensive vent and then all sorts of pipe fittings and couplers and everything to plan on replumbing the entire thing. I figured I messed up the vent or something or it wasn't high enough even though it's six inches above. I don't know. I was at the point of well I guess we're going to replumb the whole thing. The first step in doing that was to actually swap out the drain set itself. This one is designed for sinks with an overflow. That's why there are holes right through here. This vanity doesn't have an overflow. So I had to find one that fit our sink which was not very easy. Um, there weren't a lot of slots as far as drains were no overflows to choose from. So we ended up spending more than we wanted to, like 38 bucks to find one that fit and was designed for the sink, but also was not just a wide open pipe for Legos to disappear or rocks or who knows whatever else, cause you know, feral kids. So I went ahead and stuck that on first and did all of that and figured, okay, that's the first thing. Let me see if it drains. It works. So the takeaway from this would be if you have done something new and it's not working quite right, make sure you didn't get the wrong piece like we did. And then possibly it's not getting enough uh, airflow or water flow up top. These are smaller holes than the unit we bought. So maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Either way, the thing drains fast, it drains normal, and you don't have to flush the toilet for it to work. And I didn't have to change anything else. So that's all good.
Yay. So thankfully after the next day's trip to Lowe's, after spending a ton of money on all sorts of pipes and elaborate studer events and stuff, which we don't need, we gotta take it back to the store. We thankfully were able to fix the sink with just a new drain. Whew. So in the end, we still got it done. We did. It's not a patch job. I think a lot of people may think that we are bubble gum, duct tape and stuff when we say it's good enough. I think that's more of us saying we, we finished it. It is good. Don't obsess about it, but it doesn't mean it's not correct or, yeah, <laughs> me. And I guess that's me telling myself it's good enough, which means it's perfectly fine. Yes. Quit nitpicking it. It looks really good in there, and I'm excited at how it's turning out. Yeah, yeah, me too. We're really close to having the bathroom done, which is an excitement for us. It is very nice to have the possibility, well, it's no longer a possibility. The boys can use the toilet and wash their hands at the sink. Mm -hmm. They are looking forward to taking a bath or a shower in their new bathtub. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be coming up. So don't quit watching now. Yeah, don't quit watching now. <laughs> Although this is the end of this video. Something to look forward to. <laughs> well, thanks guys for coming along on our big adventure today. And we will see you guys next time. Leave us a comment below. We love to read them. And otherwise, goodbye. <laughs> what? That's not your normal outro. I know. I said it a little backwards. Ah, that's all right. See you guys. Bye. Now, since you said it backwards, you should walk backwards that way, and I walk backwards uh -huh. this way. <laughs> of our bathroom remodel. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to turn that That was now. someone ordering something from us. If it was you, <laughs> thank you. We're going to have to mute you now, but thank you. <laughs> oh, I actually did say all that toilet and vanity at the end before calling it quits. I know. I that's didn't. What I wrote okay. those at like midnight. I don't okay, know what well. I wrote. <laughs> it would appear that the toilet, the toilet flames. Fluff, fluff, fluff. Uh, we both, we went to both the uh, stuff. You alright? You tracked some bugs? Yeah, it's coming right at my ear. <laughs> Two. Whoa. What you doing, musking? Something's musking. What'd you do if a big old skunk just sprayed us? I'd cry and throw up. <laughs> there you go. Are you ready?